Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another Sonar video. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about side imaging. Today's video will help you understand how side imaging works, what your screen is showing, the settings that I use, and most importantly, how to find fish using side imaging. If you missed any of the other previous videos on the Garmin Echo Map Gen 2, you can click right here for the entire playlist of 2D sonar, clear view, and installation steps how to get the best picture. How the transducer works is it'll send the signal straight down, no different than down imaging. But once it hits the bottom, it will then send a signal to the right and to the left at a certain distance that you set on your screen. This will create an image of everything along both sides of the boat. Let's first talk about the transducer. Now the transducer is located on the back of the boat at the transom. On the screen, the transducer is actually located on the top center of the screen. Unlike 2D and down imaging sonar where the transducer is located on the top right corner, in order to create an image, the transducer sends a signal straight down to the lake bottom, just like on down imaging. This will show as a black space on the screen between the two gold lines in my case because I'm using a gold color palette. And this is the entire water column directly below the transducer. So just to clarify, this black space you see on side imaging is the exact same black space you see on your down imaging screen. The color, again, the gold palette selection that I have, is the start of the lake bottom. Now this color section from where the line starts all the way to the end of your screen illustrates what is to the right and to the left of the boat along the lake bottom. Now we have a basic understanding of how a transducer works and how the side view populates on the screen. Let's talk about the settings on this Garmin Echo Map 93 SV. First, if you hit the bottom three buttons on the bottom right corner of the screen, it's gonna open up the menu. This is gonna open up contrast. And typically I set this on default, uh, usually maybe a little bit hotter than 50%. If there's a lot of debris in the water, you wanna tur turn it down. If it's super clear water, you can turn it up. Uh, the next is the brightness. I typically run this on auto low. This is kinda of like your sensitivity. Running it on auto low is a pretty good default setting for me. The next setting we have is the frequency. And the frequency just determines kinda of the angle that this side imaging will show. Typically I run this on the megahertz frequency. Um, if you run this on the 455, it does pick up a little bit more of the very surface of the water. Um, so if a fish is only suspended about six inches or a foot down from the very surface of the water at 30, 40 feet away from your boat, you might be able to pick it up. Whereas the mega imaging is a little bit steeper of a beam angle. The next setting is the zoom function. And this is very helpful when you're trying to zoom in on the bottom or if you're looking at trees, or rocks, or weeds and trying to discern if there's fish inside of those weeds or on those rocks. Um, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can either pinch the screen kind of like you're zooming in on Google Maps or you can go to that zoom function setting and click on magnify and it'll zoom in and out. And as you can see, you just move it across the screen and to pinch it, you can close it like that. Great setting to use if you're trying to pick up crappie on a brush pile. The next setting is the range and this shows left to right of how wide your side view is actually showing. Typically I run this on either 60 to 70 feet left or right. You can either zoom or zoom in and out with the up and down keys or you can kind of use that toggle to go in and out. Um, 70 feet for me team seems to be pretty good for picking up brush piles, any trees, and even any fish kind of on the bottom. The next setting or the next menu setting is the side view setup. And on the very top, it's a scroll speed. Now scroll speed determines how fast the data is gonna uh, move across your screen. If you crank it all the way up, the data is gonna move really fast. If you crank it down, it's gonna slow down that data. Typically, I run this on default. Uh, the next is your interference and TVG. So interference and TVG just help any um, surface area noise reject, or if you're around other boats, it can help with some interference. Typically, I leave it on low. The next setting we're going to talk about is the color scheme. I typically run the amber because that's just what I'm familiar with, but you can play around with it. You just want to pick a color palette that is going to help you identify uh, fish from weeds, from brush piles, something that makes it easy for your eyes to pick up what you're trying to see. Um, the very next thing here is the range lines and Basically, this shows you kind of where your range are, is setting on your side view. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later in the video, trying to do the calculation. 
You also notice an overlay data menu setup. You can delete the depth, the time, the speed. Um, also, a second menu option is if you go to the installation, click on transducers, you can select which transducer you want your Garmin unit to read. Sometimes you have a transducer on the bow of your boat, which is on your trolling motor, versus on your transom, and you can select which transducer this Garmin unit picks up based on where you are fishing on your boat. I want to be very clear, just like in the down imaging in the 2D sonar, as that image scrolls back, it becomes historical data. And given the fact that your boat can change speeds and change directions between the time you decide to either cast at that image as it's scrolling back, it's not an exact distance if you were to throw a waypoint and it shows 100 feet or 50 feet to behind the boat or to the right of the boat. The best way to make sure that you're on top of that piece of cover, in this case a brush pile, is actually to put a waypoint down, go back over it, preferably with down imaging, and then throw out a buoy marker to make sure you are directly on top of it. Gives you something to cast at, puts more crappie in the boat. So let's just clarify the range settings. So if I were to set my range from 40 feet left and right, I don't actually get to see 40 feet left and right. I have to take my range, in this case the 40 feet, minus the total depth of the water. And that's actually what I'm seeing left and right of the lake bottom. So now that we have an understanding of distance, let's talk about historical data. If you remember from my 2D and down imaging videos, any image that appeared on the far right of the screen was directly underneath the transducer. Now on side imaging, because the transducer is located on the top center of the screen, any image that appears at the top of either the right or left of the screen, as they populate up on the screen, they come from the top of the screen. As soon as they get to populate, as soon as they start to populate on the screen, they are either directly underneath the boat if they're in the black space, or if they're in the gold space to the right or the left of the boat, they're directly to the right or the left. As the images scroll from top to bottom, those images are now further behind the boat if the boat is moving. That's a big caveat and it's important to understand. If the boat is not moving, the screen will still scroll from top to bottom, but the image will be elongated or blurry just like the 2D and down imaging videos that I previously made. So now that we've covered all the settings on this Garmin Echo Map 93 SV, let's talk about what side imaging can show you in terms of how to find these crappie. The first is from Mississippi. This is in late February, early March. A lot of these fish are suspended out into the middle of these creeks. And I'm just going to show you what they look like on side view here. Reservoirs and where you can find these crappie in reservoirs. Typically, it's the mouth of the feeder creek. Um, right now, I'm just headed into one right here. And on side imaging, you can kind of see, one, there's a bunch of bait, but all these little suspended groups of fish, most of them have been crappie. Like that's probably a pretty nice crappie right there. Those crappie tend to be a little bit more rounded. If it's a junk fish, they're gonna be a little bit more elongated. So there's something right there that's a little bit more of elongated. I don't know if that's something on the bottom or that's just a, you know, it could be a catfish or some sort of rough fish, carp, whatever they have in, in this river or this, uh, this reservoir system. I've actually caught almost my limit of crappie. The, the tricky part was actually trying to get fish over that 12 inch mark. A lot of them are like 11 and a half, 11 three quarter, um, which is crazy. They have a minimum 12 inch size limit on their crappie, which is probably why they get so big. The, on both the left and right side of the screen, it's, it's really churned up right now because we've got a lot of waves. That's what all that little, looks like a bunch of sediment. But when you get a bunch of waves like this, it's gonna look kind of choppy, but you can see below, this would be my, my down view, right in the black area. Anything in the black on left and right of the screen is gonna be my down view. Here's a school of crappie out to the left. You can see the bright spots, but you can also see the shadows. The longer the distance between the bright spot and the shadow, the further that bright spot, the fish, is off the bottom. So this next scenario is actually a crappie, or a school of crappie on a concrete pillar. Um, which is a little bit different than crappie suspended in the middle of a feeder creek. So here we are on a river system. I'm going to walk you through what I'm seeing on my screen. It is not very big at all. And typically what I've been finding this throughout the summer, these fish have been stacked up on it, but they've been super tight to that concrete pillar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to both my 2D and my down imaging. And if you see on the down imaging screen, there are fish stacked above it right there but they are super tight. Oh, 
air super tight to that brush to that uh, that concrete piling right over the top of it right here there it is right there so now that I have it I'm gonna throw that buoy marker out right on top of it you can see there's some fish they're not very big but there's some fish right on top of that thing so and once we have the buoy, buoy marker out we're gonna circle back with the trolling motor and uh, preferably face upwind into our buoy marker in the last scenario, I wanted to sh show what side view can do when you're looking at weed lines, which is typically what we have up north, especially as we get into the summer season here. So this is a submerged mid-lake hump with a ton of weeds on top of it. These crappie are late post-spawn, early summer pattern. They spawned on top of it, which is not typical, I don't think. Um, usually they, they go to the shorelines to do that. But uh, these crappie went from schooling to their post-spawn phase, and now they're late post-spawn into their summer pattern. Anchor locked on this edge of this weed line. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the weed line's just a big pile of weeds right here, and then it stops right here. So I'm just going to cast. I can kind of, I can see it. The water's clear enough. I can see that weed edge right through here, and I'm just going to cast alongside of it. And uh, I saw them on the side imaging. They're kind of tough to see because my boat was bouncing so much that but there the, there's one they're right on the edge so that's going to wrap it up for the three scenarios of how to find these crappie with side view if you got any comments or questions about the garmin echo map post them in the comment section below i appreciate you watching as always we'll see you in the next one